Hello, Jess Too Good here, and my gosh, this is the Medieval Blacksmith Lego Idea Set. It has 2,164 pieces, four minifigures, and retails for $150, where you can buy it February 1st from Lego stores and shop at home. This was sent to me early by Lego, but all opinions in this video are my own. And stay tuned for later in this video, we'll be comparing it to the 2002 Blacksmith fan design, as well as showing off some of the other Blacksmith Lego sets. For the first of our nights, I love the Black Falcons reference with these two figures because that sub-theme I'm not too familiar with from LEGO Castle, but I'm glad they're just paying tribute to an old LEGO Castle sub-theme because I love LEGO Castle. The design of this does use a nice recolor of the Praetorian Guard shoulder pad right there. That also comes in Ninjago City Gardens from my understanding. Again, new printing on the torso and legs. Base print is actually really uncommon, but not new. It came in like one Lego City set from last year. And the hair piece is one that I don't see too often in regular sets. This was introduced with the Zombie Businessman back in 2015 with Series 14. And that design is just cool to see in a regular set. And it actually fits the minifigure pretty well. No alternate face printing or anything like that. I also like the build for the Halberd, which uses that Monkey King staff piece in gray. As for the next night, we have a Black Falcon Shield, which that's a fantastic printing. Love the silver with half of that design. In that color, the sword is exclusive to the set. That's actually a sword piece from a Series 20 minifigure. Love getting that hair piece in that light gray because that design only came in that police station from LEGO City. Also the armor piece from the last wave of LEGO Ninjago. And a look again at that fantastic new torso and leg printing, which you can see continues to the back. Now this face printing doesn't have an alternate face. It's not a new face just for the set or anything like that. Also included for these minifigures are these two helmets so that you can suit them up. And here they are all geared up. The design of the blacksmith has one new print from my understanding, which is just this torso. We'll get a better look at that in a little bit. But that beard as well as that hair piece in those dark orange colors aren't exactly common, so that's a nice inclusion. I know that hair piece comes in I think only the Beauty and the Beast set. Leg piece is actually the one from the coffee workers, so that's kind of cool to have the coffee shop design used in such a medieval setting and it actually works. Funny how the face print underneath is Harv's from the LEGO City Adventure sets, where he has his determined look as well as his alternate face, which looks a lot more chipper. That's just some nice print usage there. I actually think I like how the beard looks with that side on even better. And for this figure, I love the design of that torso, which only appeared in one other set, which is from the Pirate's Bay idea set, so that's not super easy to get. Dual molded legs, which have appeared in some other figures, but not super common. Love that princess hair appearing once again, which doesn't appear too often nowadays. We also have a quiver and a bone arrow accessory. I like this winky face on one side, but this isn't a really hard print to get. I believe it comes in quite a few LEGO City sets. You can see that alternate face printing right here. And then a look at that back torso printing. And there's a dog included, specifically a husky from my understanding. This is the same piece used since 2014. I think they were first introduced in one of the LEGO City Arctic waves. And I do love that design, but it's nothing too uncommon. For the horse, this design actually has a new print where it's on a tan base and we have some nice new printing at the front head. Now, if you don't know how these newer horses work, you can move up the head like this. And you could also move the hind legs, which just move it like this. And in the middle, we do have this little block about or just a one by two tile and brick. And if you remove that, you can attach the horse to the carriage build, which the design of the carriage is pretty cool. I like just the sizing here where it's not too big, not too small. The interior right here has two helmets and these are just extra helmets as well as a little satchel, maybe with some treasure. To the right over here, we have this lantern, which you can move left and right and up and down. And also there's another instance of the Black Falcon shield appearing with this little cart. It does appear one more time in the set. And you have enough space to fit two minifigures sitting at the front. And here's how the carriage looks with the minifigures on where that bottom part can rotate very easily with a ball joint connection. So you could get some nice turns in there. For the build of the blacksmith shop, this design is just so gorgeous from like every angle. <laughs> even the back right here which is probably the least interesting angle, but they have a little archery thing right there. And then on this side as well. Uh. But anyways, let's take a look at each of these individual sections because this does work a bit like a modular. With a modular design, it splits into three sections. Very easy to remove and put these back on. That first section has a workshop. That workshop's kind of the basement because at the ground floor, we have the kitchen as well as a little dining area. 
And then for access to the top floor, you actually have to remove this roof section right here because this other one on the other side, it's a little bit harder with the chimney. And just removing that section, which is only placed in there. It's not connected, but it fits very, very well. I just pull it forward like this. You get a look at that final floor. And you know, let's change stuff up. We could start from the top and make our way to the bottom to the blacksmith workshop. But anyways, for this top floor, which is a bedroom, love the design of the bearskin rug. I mean, that's kind of dark, but that is translated very, very well. Love the use of that one by one piece up there and the mini figure stand in the middle. Also love the quilt for this bed in the corner where we have a dark green and also some light green and then that nice blue. It's just a great color combination. I thought it would only be two colors, but it's actually three. Also love the bed frame where they use a lot of interesting pieces like those modified one by ones, the ice cream tops you can see at the back, just more of that ice cream top and some cheese slopes. Then we have this little chest in the corner Inside, we have one of those classic Lego traveler bags, which connect at the neck, as well as this one by one compass, which isn't a new print, but a nice one to get. I like the use of the cylinder pieces at the top here. That gives it a very nice look. At this side, we have a window that's kind of protruding out, a nice build, which does have some dark blue tiles to the left, more of those Nexonite shield pieces. On the other side, we have a tile that isn't sticking out. I like the studs on top techniques with uh, the little tiles right here. Also, I like how these are built, though sometimes they get a little bit disconnected, which is just like this outer frame right here. This is using a Technic pin connection and you just kind of slot those in place and it works very well. On the other side, we didn't get a big look at that chimney or that window there. Again, some nice bills that just add to the top here. I actually really like how this chimney is ended using these astromech pieces. That just works very well. Is that astromech piece or is that just for the BB units? I don't know. And for those curious, yeah, you could still move this side of the wall. I just said it was hard and it doesn't really look right from this side either. And putting this side of the roof back on, just look at all the different colors make up the shingles on the roof. We have some black, we have some light and dark blues, we have some green at the top, even some of these vent pieces getting in on the action, just some missing shingle pieces. I love that. I will say the green at the top looks a little bit jarring. I don't know if they should have put that. It does make for an interesting moss design, but it's just completely different from the blues and the blacks and the dark blues that they use for the rest of it. But let's move on to the next section of the blacksmith shop. One floor down is the design of the kitchen and dining room. I love the build for these chairs right here where they have a nice pattern design at the seat, but also some fantastic part usage with that hatchet right there and the three long bar. Also the table has a little lettuce or leaf right there and then this chicken leg, two goblets as well. I like the design of the little ale barrel under the staircase. Nice little <laughs> reference right there, an alcohol reference in a Lego set, but fantasy sets usually have that. And we have a range here, which is pretty cool how they have this cauldron cooking and you can move that side to side. Also a pot there and some nice logs at the back. I like this little churn in the corner and also this cutting station, which has the butcher's cleaver in black. I haven't seen it in that color before. Correct me if I'm wrong. Has it appeared in other sets? All right, double checked. It was in a random speed champion set in that color. Anyways, for the exterior, love the designs. It's does not on top techniques with these tiles. Nice shaping with those corner tiles. Got some more here and nice placement with these random mason bricks. And on this side, we even have a nice print exclusive to the set, which has the blacksmith shop logo. That's on a two by four tile. Also love the little bit of shingles right here and the chimney design. And then on this side, I love how they built the door right here. Again, a lot of love with this set. <laughs> but this door is just so cute on uh, how small it is, but it is fit for a minifigure. It just isn't the conventional way I would expect, you know, one of those old Lego Harry Potter doors or castle doors that they used to use. But you can see it has one by four prints of the planks on there, which isn't a new print, but uh, pushing that open leads right into the kitchen and dining area. Funny enough, the ground floor has a very similar design, if not the same exact design. <laughs> yeah, actually it's the same design for the door. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But this is the floor, of course, with the blacksmith workshop, which that looks fantastic inside there. We'll take a closer look at the interior, but the exterior is probably even more gorgeous, I would have to say. I mean, I love this tree in the corner. I mean, it's a pain in the butt to build, <laughs> as you would imagine with all those flower pieces. But look at this little well right here. The overall design and how this uses those lighter greens and just regular greens. And at the back, they even have a little archer two by two, which is not new, but still a nice print to get because it's not super common. And notice all of the apple trees there. It gives a kingdoms feel actually. I, I, I get a kingdoms feel from this because I'm thinking of that poly bag that had like the little archery tree. 
But anyways, right behind there and behind the well, there's a little bit of a lumber area where you could store some extra logs. But going back to the front, I hope I'm using the right smithing terms, the blacksmith terms, or the blacksmith community will be pissed at me. <laughs> what we have is a furnace here and an anvil. I'm using knowledge from RuneScape, which I haven't played in a few years, and my blacks, or sorry, my smithing level was like level 40 or something like that, so I'm not super high in it. But the design of this has a light brick where you trigger it just by pushing this part. And that's actually pretty cool under that sword. Doesn't seem like it's anything that brings up the price and it's just a nice little inclusion. We also have some more swords to the left right here. Again, a lot of nice sword pieces in this set. And we have that anvil right here, which you could put a sword on if you want. And also on this side, we have another little smithing tool, which is just attached right here. And then we have two pumpkins, which one of them uses the actual pumpkin piece, which is nice to get. And I like how they built these sides with the windows right here. Nice part usage with the gold bar piece in that brown. And then over on this side, probably the least interesting out of all the sides of this ground floor. And yes, I know I don't push down pieces sometimes. Sometimes those tiles get misaligned, but it's because there's only one stud connection there. So that's just naturally gonna happen. And at the front, this one by one tile keeps getting misaligned because of this one by one in the way right there. It's just a little bit too much in the territory of the one by two but it's still not a big deal. But when it comes down to pushing down pieces, okay, yeah, I could maybe use a little bit of work there, but do keep in mind, I'm not the best builder in the world. <laughs> you probably notice a few building mistakes even in this review. But anyways, for that blacksmith workshop, the design here, like I said, has that second anvil, which it's nice with the little gold bar piece in that orange as if it has a little bit of lava there. And we also have an access to that furnace at the front, as well as a little coal stack right here. And then over here, I like the little armor pieces that are on the wall, as well as another instance of that Black Falcon shield. So there's a little bit more in this set, just one more. And then we also have some iron in the corner here, as well as another instance of that helmet, cauldron, a little pan, and I believe just some bars in the corner right here on the wall. Also some little cleaning utensils and everything. And just looking at that light brick from the inside, Still looks pretty cool. And again, that door at the front is the same build from that second level. Anyways, with everything back together, let's see how all those designs just come together on the outside. And it just lines up almost perfectly. I mean, it looks like this is all connected and not like a modular design, but uh, yeah. I love with the overall exterior and interior design of this set. But let's compare it to the 2002 Blacksmith Shop. So over here, we have the 2021 Blacksmith Shop, and then right here, the 2002 Blacksmith Shop, which this was also a fan design. This was by Daniel Siskind. My understanding was he sold the instructions for this on his website, and LEGO was just seeing how popular it was and was like, hey, let's produce this into official set. And then for this one, of course, it's straight through LEGO Ideas, which the design is by Clemens Fielder. And we'll take a look at his bio later when we look at the instructions. But there's a big difference between these two, but they kind of keep a similar color scheme with the blue roofs. The big difference being, well, I mean, size and everything. But to me, this one opens up right down the middle. And then, of course, this new one has a much more modular style where you just remove each of the floors. And I do love how quaint the dollhouse interior is on the original design. But I mean, the biggest difference is, of course, the size. I mean, that's the obvious big difference because the new one is just so much bigger and so much more detailed. But if there's one thing I do like better with this original blacksmith design is the use of a base plate, or actually two base plates because it was two 8x16s. I love base plates more than regular plates, but that's just a bias thing. That's not anything that like makes a set better or worse. I mean, arguably these new plates are better than base plates because base plates can't connect at the bottom. But I love that flat base that base plates give, but really it's probably a nostalgia thing because my brother and I used to always play with base plates back when we had a little Lego RPG. But yeah, the new one is bigger, better, but that original one still holds a place in my heart and they're both fan creations, funny enough. And we can't forget the two adorable figures included in the set. But I love the unconventional part usage and tribute to Black Falcons the new range of minifigures brings. And of course, the set is an even bigger departure from the original blacksmith shop from LEGO, the 1984 Legoland version. And we did have that Kingdoms one that I showed earlier, which was really a cheap set. So it made sense that this is closer to the size of this set. 
But that's it for our little comparisons. Let me know if you want to see a more in-depth blacksmith comparison video. Maybe we could whip out that Ninjago one as well. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. It's the $18 box size, which actually kind of works for this set. I like the medieval blacksmith logo in the corner there. Also some green at the bottom. And then on the other side, we have some different shots of the set. For the instructions, we do have a little designer interview at the beginning for Clemens Fielder. And you could read that right here. And also see that original design. And yeah, the original design looks fantastic, but I think the official set looks more like an official Lego set. This one looks unrealistically big. I mean, even bigger than the official set, but maybe my eyes are just playing tricks on me. I find it funny how they say some of Clemens medieval builds. Well, I mean, that's Market Village. That's the windmill set and that's the winter village set. So that, that's not even like his builds, but okay. <laughs> And we also have the Lego designers as a little page as well. I like how they dress up on them nowadays. Like the Haunted House one was great. And then we have a timeline of the blacksmith sets, which we've shown all four of those in this video. And they forgot the Ninjago ones, SMH, I mean, come on. <laughs> and then we got a fancy win ad at the very end, which shows Grand Piano, Sesame Street, and Pirates Bay. So overall, yeah, I got this for free. I probably sound like a show the whole video, but this is an awesome set. My main problem with it, which are two problems, they're not big problems. Don't like the green up here, and I don't like the minifigure selection on how little minifigures they include. Like, the ones they include are cool. They should have included more. It's $150, and we don't get castle stuff often, so it would have been nice to get more Black Falcons minifigures. But to be fair, the old fishing store had the same price and the same amount of minifigures, so it's not entirely unheard of to have LEGO idea sets with not as many minifigures. But those aren't two big problems. I love everything else about this set. I love the exterior. I love the size. I love the value for the price. Like this is a fantastic $150 set, but Lego Ideas prices are usually good. I wanna hear in the comments, if you guys don't like this set, what is it that you don't like about it? That's interesting to me. And also, do you wanna see a big blacksmith comparison? Subscribe for more Lego castle and just general Lego content, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out, bye.